Oh no! Beta! The year is 1985. You just bought your first VCR. And you decided on Betamax because you heard that it's better. But you're worried that someone's going to break into your house and steal it. What do you do? Why, you buy the bib video alarm to protect your VCR from theft. This thing is ridiculous. I, I'm so looking forward to playing with this. So this is a cartridge that you put inside your VCR and I believe it is sensitive to uh, movement. So you turn the key to turn it on, put the key in your keychain or whatever, push this inside. I think there's probably like a countdown time. And then if anyone jostles your VCR or if your like, cat jumps on top of it or something or there's an earthquake, it will go off. Impossible to remove or disarm without the correct key. Locks into all beta recorders. Gives off a deafening 98 decibels from inside the VCR when triggered. Ooh, built-in battery tester. Safe and easy to use. Well, we'll see about that. 98 decibels is a uh, hearing damage level. I might have to wear hearing protection when I try this out. Made in England. Patent pending. This was someone's entrepreneurial idea. Make it big. So let's see. Here it is. It's got a, a um, smell that tells me there's still a battery inside it. You can kind of see a Duracell there. I don't see any evidence of it leaking, so here's hoping. You can see the circuitry inside a little bit. Battery test. And luckily, this did come with the key. Nope, that was right the first time. At least I hope it came with the right key. Yeah. So, so let's test this out and see how well it protects us from thieves. Before I get started, there was a little extra note in there. Made on a typewriter and photocopied. When the alarm is inserted, it may automatically be injected, ejected. And if so, shut your VCR off before it does that. The eject the video alarm, I'm assuming they mean to eject it, just turn the VCR back on. And apparently, before a certain model Sanyo, you need to break off an extra tab. So this piece here, hmm. okay. Let's see what the battery has done. Well, you know, there's there's some corrosion, but it's not as bad as, as it could have been. But, uh, that one terminal is a little blue, but I can probably clean that up. Ugh, gross. Let's go from this side. Oh, oh, I'm going to do this over the garbage. Wow. That was the smell that this whole package had. Bad battery. Never seen them get that blue before. That's a deep, beautiful blue. Normally it's more of like an aqua -y green. All right, I guess before start, I'm going to clean this off with a little bit of vinegar and the nice propyl. I might have to scrape it to get a good contact on there. And then, ooh, you can see the little sounder. Oh, this is one of those little alarm sounders. Yeah, those go loud. Okay, let me clean this up first. There. Wow, that actually still looks bad on camera, but it's much cleaner and should be able to make some contact there. Um, I was kind of hoping to tear this apart, but there's no screws. You can see it's just been melted together in these in these locations. So I would like to test it out first before even opening it up inside. Understand how it works. Like, look at this, this little switch here. I'm assuming that this is what enables it. So before it goes into the machine, this switch is up and it's not going to go off while you're, you know, handling it and the eject loading mechanism is slamming it down. But once it gets put in place, 
then it's live. I think, anyway. Let's get a battery. Okay, I think this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, audio warning, volume warning. I'm gonna be wearing these, so yeah. Let's see if we pop this in. It's in the off position. No, that's right. Don't bother with the screw. So now, oh, yeah, okay. It means battery's good. So, loading into VCR, turn key anti-clockwise to the on position and remove key Insert alarm into the recorder as if you were loading a cassette. After 15 seconds, the alarm is set and any movement will trigger the alarm. Eject, press the eject button on the recorder. Have your key ready to place in the alarm as it appears. The alarm will trigger during the eject, but only momentarily and is silenced by the key. So every time you want to use the VCR, this is going to go off. Okay, this is fun. Plug this in. All right, power on. There's no tape in there. Key is in the armed position. All right. So we're good now. Let's wait 15 seconds. Feel like I'm getting ripped off here. Well, at this point, I could have just walked away with this thing. <laughs> it beeped for a second. Shit. Okay, I understand what this is. Look at that. This is a lock to prevent you from removing this from the machine. And it kind of beeps. You hear it beep a little bit. I don't know if this is a dirty switch. I'm just going to wait 15 seconds with this sitting here and see what I can do. Battery connection is good. Why is this? I think we may have to take this apart. Nothing a little drill can't solve. Nothing better than drilling into plastic. Here it is. Very simple. So there's your sounder, your alarm. Here's the contacts for this little switch here. And this key. Oh, I see. Okay. So this key here hits the switch. Battery test. Is a big ass resistor. I guess that does like a load test or something. And there's your circuitry. And this, this I'm assuming is what detects any sort of movement. That's interesting. Don't it looks like a transistor, and all four legs are soldered together, and then the 
outer shield or casing is connected to the other wire. So what is this? Oh no, that's something I'm completely unfamiliar with. So this must be some sort of gyroscopic move, movement sensor. Yeah. Oof, that's loud. Okay. I think I just need to really clean these battery connectors. Seems like the problem is in here. So let me clean that. All right. I've decided to go all big clive on this. Um, took it apart and sketched out. It's a very, very simple circuit. It isn't working, but now I think I have the opportunity to figure out why it's not working. So this little the thing that looks like a transistor, when I put the multimeter across these two, I see a floating voltage of around seven, seven and a half volts. And when I shake it, it goes down to zero. So this grounds, this basically, um, the shorts when you shake it. That's your motion detection. I've put it as a question mark because I have no idea what it is. Someone please tell me what that is. <laughs> anyway, um, it goes into a voltage divider network here with a one meg ohm and a 6.8 meg ohm resistor. So normally you'd be seeing most of the voltage cross here. So it's sitting at like seven and a half volts, let's say. Oh, I have horrible writing. And when you shake this, this provides a path to ground. So that goes to pin one and two of this IC. And this IC was a CD4011BCN, which is a quad NAND gate. And if you're familiar with uh, logic like this, and of course you have two inputs, and if they're both active, the output turns on. Or if you have two outputs and either one turns on, then the output turns on. NAND means that you have to have both inputs off. It's this package here. So that means that both of these, for example, would have to be off or grounded in order for this to turn on. I don't think it has to be grounded. I think it just has to be nothing there. That's why there's a voltage divider. So when this grounds, then this would turn on because this little dot here means it's the opposite of, of this symbol, which is and. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well. There's lots of good information about this out there. any rate, though, so when this grounds, this would turn on, and then this goes to the second gate, and this goes active, and then you have this little timer circuit here. So this cap will uh, be charging up, and you have this 470 kilo ohm resistor, so this would essentially look like ground through the cap until this is charged. And 47 microfarad, that'll take, I guess the idea is through this 470K resistor should take around 15 seconds. Once that happens, then you're going to see the positive through this resistor because this will act like it's open once it's charged. With DC, a capacitor should look open. And uh, so this will be active. And as we said, this is active because both of those are grounded, which means that this will go inactive. That's, of course, tied here. So now you have this inactive you want to make active again. You just put it through here, tie the two together, and all this does is it flips the logic. So when this is off, this is on. This is on, this is off. So they're using the third NAND gate to flip it on. So once this capacitor is charged, and if this mystery device shorts the ground, then this output will turn active. And this uh, 
fourth NAND gate, they just have the inputs grounded and it's not connected to anything. Then that goes through a 1K resistor. All right, I definitely didn't do a good job describing this in the actual video, so I'm just going to dub over and redo it. The SCR is used to latch the alarm on. So the moment that the output of the IC pin 11 goes active through that 1K resistor to the gate of the SCR, the SCR will latch on until the power is removed from the anode. So on the left-hand side there. I believe this other 1K resistor is used to load it down because the alarm may not draw enough current for it to stay latched. That part I'm not really too sure. But the SCR is essentially what latches the alarm on, so once the motion disappears, the alarm will still be going off. So what I want to find out is, what in all of this is not working correctly? I want to say it's this capacitor, because like, you know, capacitors. But now I can start probing through the circuit and figure out why it's not working. Because I want to protect my Betamax VCR. One more thing I wanted to mention, that switch, that is right here. I missed that part. Mmm, bad capacitor. Okay, I think I got it working just fine. Um, I went on a whole tangent trying to figure out if this was broken because I was testing it and it wasn't working correctly because I'm stupid. But yeah, in the end it was just kind of what I thought it was originally, a bad cap. It's always bad caps. Always bad caps. Um, so I found a uh, 47 microfarad to replace it. This is way overkill. This is also radial, that's axial, but who cares? They just sort of tacked it in there because it's used. Come on, focus. Focus. I just tacked it onto the edge of that resistor. I will say removing components with that is amazing. So, yeah, that's way overkill. But to remove, you know, components from circuit boards and stuff, it really helps. Anyway, it's working now. Uh, also went on Discord. Thank you to the people that helped me think properly. Uh, in this circuit, this serves two functions. The first and foremost, foremost function is that if you were to apply power right away and this capacitor isn't here, this would just immediately latch on, or this would immediately latch on, and it would stay on. So you need some form of delay here. The second function is that 15 second delay that's advertised on the packaging, which is kind of wrong. Um, the threshold of this IC is I think four volts, and it takes nine seconds to get to four volts. So yeah, close enough. But yeah, that's needed. Still don't know what this is. It's, uh, guys were calling it a non uh, mercury tilt switch, which would make sense. I was thinking of it as kind of an accelerometer, but it's a It's a thingy. It's a thingy that does a thing and detects physical motion So let's put this back together and try it out for real this time Before I permanently close this just a quick look at how this key switch works So there's a little arm here That lifts this locking mechanism up so you can slide the tape in and out which is important and it also has a piece on this side. So if I hold this and turn it, you'll see it now lets this go down, which is one way. It, um, it's angled so it'll spring up as you're putting the tape in. You can see on the bottom here, see it's angled like that, but then when it comes back this way, it will jam up and not let you take the tape out. And this also has a little plastic piece that goes and pushes up against the switch and turns the switch on. All right, I've got this little guy back together. Just sort of scotch taped it. And I can demonstrate the battery test. So we turn the key switch on, wait a few seconds. So it is ready to work. So what I need to do now, VCR on arm it and now it's armed this is going to be loud
So I was just doing a little bit of research, you know, after recording this video, which is usually how I do things. And I noticed that a uh, video magazine did a review on this in 1985. And I was like, I have video magazine. And sure enough, video magazine from April, 1985. And in the bottom corner, Bib VHS video alarm. These magazines are really cool. Uh, they're chock full of ads, which, you know, back then must have been annoying. But you get to see a lot of stuff that just doesn't exist anymore. Like this Sansui branded Hi-Fi VCR. I I've never seen one of these out in the wild. That's a really, really cool state-of-the-art AV stuff. But here... In the video tests section, they talk about the BIV video alarm. So I'm probably not going to narrate the whole thing, but if you want to pause and take a view of that, you can skip right to their conclusion. Now what's interesting is all the Google searching I did, all the results I found were all for the VHS version. I have not really seen the beta version, so this was especially interesting. By 1985, they were just saying, yeah, this is the VHS one. There's also beta, but it's amazing how fast that went. So they tested it in December 1984. It retailed for $39.95, presumably US, standard VHS. The weight runs on a 9-volt battery, 98 decibels. Apparently in the review they say, yeah, 98, de 98 decibels at 3 feet outside the VCR. Oh boy. And you can place it up to a 30 degree incline without false triggering. So that makes me think that that little sensor does have a ball bearing in it and it will just move around and, and short out. None of our editors could move more than a few steps without triggering. It is not possible to remove the cassette without triggering the alarm. We even tried disassembly of the VCR. So they got, they gave it a very good, very good. Huh. Anyway, that's just something neat, neat to see.